Our chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, is used to flying over terrible scenes by helicopter. He did so again today only in this country, in this city, where he saw some terrible things down below and saw clearly some of the challenges before us from the air, where Richard says you can clearly see a merging of weather and national security. Four days after Hurricane Sandy left people feeling like a bomb had dropped on them, we took to the sky with Detective Dennis DiRienzo on an NYPD helicopter to survey the damage. Force of this water, I mean, that's why they tell people to evacuate because there's no playing with the ocean, but uh, just to see it after is uh, is pure amazement. From about 1,000 feet, we could see how this storm humbled the Empire State. It's amazing to see the boardwalk is totally torn up here. Boardwalks in splinters. We lost 100 houses in Breezy. Burned black patches where homes used to be. Entire harbors tossed. An oil tanker beached and leaking. Crews have begun to pump out lower Manhattan. But some areas are profoundly waterlogged, like the subways. We went underground to see. And there's still water down in there now? Yes, we have water almost all the way up to the mezzanine here. Which Joe is Leader is in charge of getting mass transit drained uh, and running. Is there anything that can be done to prevent this from happening again? Well, we looked at this storm right from the beginning as a Category 1. So we began covering all the vents in the areas with plywood. We uh, boarded up all the station entrances that we could. In the future, if you're going to prevent storms like this, Category 1, Category 2, with surges like this, you would have to actually raise the, uh, the bulkhead and create more of a seawall to try and prevent the water from coming in. Hurricane Sandy is a wake-up call to all of us in the city and on Long Island. Oceanographer Malcolm Bowman from Stony Brook University has been arguing for years that the New York metropolitan area needs a better plan. That means designing and building storm surge barriers like uh, many cities in Europe already have. In the Netherlands, following a major storm in 1953, which drowned thousands, the government built an extensive series of storm surge barriers. If we had such barriers in place during Hurricane Sandy, there would have been no damage at all. This animation, produced by the Dutch company Arcadis, shows what a barrier in New York Harbor might look like. If a surge was coming, 25-foot-high gates would drop and then swing shut to block the water until the danger had passed. The surge is completely blocked by the system. But Bowman's idea would require years of study and cost as much as $15 billion, a huge amount, but still just about a third of the estimated cost of rebuilding after Sandy. We can't put all our eggs in that basket. Cynthia Rosenzweig, who heads the Climate Impacts Group at Columbia University, cautions that barriers are not the only answer. The better way is for New Yorkers to be smart, from engineered solutions like tidal barriers, fixing the subways where they're vulnerable, fixing our seawalls, remaking our wetlands so that we can, across our whole region and for all our 21.5 million people, protect against the next Hurricane Sandy. And with scientists now predicting that the sea level could rise between three and six feet by the end of the century, even moderate storms could be catastrophic. We have to expect this to be the new norm. We have to take bold new approaches if we want our city to survive. So this has everything. It's got politics, environment, national security. In endorsing Obama today, Mayor Bloomberg mentioned climate change. And as I said to the governor, it's already New Amsterdam. Could the city be the new New Amsterdam? I think it's really important to start thinking about infrastructure as essential national security. For the last 10 years plus, the United States has had a main national security priority. The thing we've spent the most money on, a trillion plus dollars, most American lives on, and that has been bringing democracy to Iraq and Afghanistan Mm -hmm. with very questionable results. People I've spoken to, experts in this field, say we would be a lot safer, not just richer, if we had spent a lot of that money on improving infrastructure. That is not to say that counterterrorism isn't important. It certainly is. But they're related because the stronger your society is, the more protected you are also from a terrorist attack. We may have to keep you around to cover this for a while. Richard Engel, thanks. Good to see you.